Guys, what is going on? How are you doing? Um, today is going to be extra good because uh, we're doing a topic that I don't think we've ever covered. I mean, I've talked about it before, like chords. Chords is like... <laughs> I went from starting my Ableton career only caring about drums to then only caring about chords. And... I think I'm gonna title it Chord Theory, although the only thing we're doing is not chords. I'd like to actually make some things and uh, do a lot of wavetable because um, if you watch that SDHO all of the wavetable, I don't know if I just had a wavetable epiphany, but I was like, you know, I wanna start using wavetable a lot more now. And because I'm not always using Ableton, I'm mostly just using Ableton to make these videos. Um, I want to use a lot of Wavetable because the sounds that you can get with Wavetable are just so unique and if you really know what you're doing, um, yeah, you would be well served to, to really know Wavetable and, um, and Wavetable synthesis very well. Whatever your Wavetable synthesizer is, you know, um, that you prefer to use, I know Serum was like the biggest name on the block for a while and I don't keep up with any of that stuff so um like I think uh Native Instruments Massive um is a wavetable synth that like blew up in the whole like dubstep EDM thing in the early 2010s um and then yeah I believe then like Serum came out and it was just like the best um and when Ableton Live 10 came out, Wavetable got added, and it had to, you know? I mean, uh, you know, that would have been a reason to not use all of Ableton's stuff, you know? When I wanted to, to, to you know, learn Ableton and really go for it, I was like, I was like, I wanna make sure that there's not any sort of plugins I need, you know? I mean, you know, I, not because I didn't want plugins, but because maybe it's just like my, idealism I, I don't know if that's the right word like meaning like hey if I'm going to be getting the the top tier of music production technology you know so I can make the best possible most amazing things you can make with music I, I need to be able to do everything and I truly do believe that Ableton is that and has been that and so they added wavetable it's amazing um, check out the all of the wavetable and any other wavetable videos I do um, because it's really interesting. But, but before we get into chord theory, I want to do something really fun. It's um, an exercise, which, wow, I must really be turning into a teacher now. But the exercise is, because we're all about sound design, is, um, is something very basic. And you can use any synth you want, but because we're in Ableton, we're going to, this is me really quick, very basic. Operator, analog. Now, again, this is gonna be quick. Anytime you have a synthesizer, you load it up on a track and you hit a note, you're gonna hear something. That's because it has a volume envelope. There's other envelopes, like a filter envelope, freely routable envelopes, and you can assign them to things. And oftentimes, if you don't assign them to things, you won't hear anything. And that's for good reason. However, the amplitude envelope, which is the volume envelope, is always active. So right now, what we're going to do really quickly is we're going to look at wavetable, operator, analog. Very quickly, then we're going to move on. And you can pause the video and come back. But it's, do I know, and this is if you're using any synthesizer, do I know where the volume envelope is? And as I hit these notes... Am I aware that, yes, th their volume contour is linked to that volume envelope, um, and to, to where the um, volume in its envelope is? Because if that's going to be the first most basic part. And so whether you're using Serum or Massive or anything else, um, the first step, if you're opening up a new synth or just really getting to know your synth, is where is that amplitude envelope? Again, amplitude, volume, just every time I say ampl amplitude, you can just use volume. Uh, volume envelope. So where are we? We're in wavetable. Make sure record enabled. We hit a note. 
what do you know? And here, here's the AMP envelope. Now, you don't have to do anything to this. You don't have to go into the matrix. You don't have to do any routing. The amplitude envelope is always on. So right now, what does this say? Hardly any attack, so we're going to hear it right away. And then look, it's like sloping down, and then it sustains down here. And we got this release. So if we took this all the way down, right? Okay, so where is it in operator? Oscillator A, this is the volume envelope. <laughs> Hold on, let's switch back. Sustains all the way up, so we hear it all the way. If it was all the way down, we wouldn't hear it, and we would only hear 700 seconds. We got our release. So right there, that would be the first place to start. Always know where that is. Where is it in analog? Well, right here, amplitude. Right now, it's up, and we can, well, record enable it. Oh, hurting our ears because it was on a square wave, but saw sine wave. Oh no, what happened? Well, it's because we're in this shell. Got to click the amp. So sometimes you might have to click a section for it to pop up. And look, it's all the way up, but... Okay, so that was your practice. Wow, looks like I'm really turning into a teacher. Wow, wow, what do you say? Welcome. It is me from the future. I actually recorded an SDHO a couple of nights ago, and um, it wasn't a bad SDHO at all, but I'm not going to be releasing it. Now, if you would like to see that SDHO, um, if you, uh, whoever's the first person to purchase an NFT will get the exclusive to be able to watch their own private SDHO that I will not be releasing on this channel. The reason why it's, it's let's just, Right now, I'm, I'm recording during the daytime, you know, I'm drinking my cold water, um, but let's just say that SDHO was a little different. It was, it was at nighttime, and uh, I was a little bit over-served, if you catch my drift. You know, even though it's fine, and most of you would be like, oh, that's fine, like, not a big deal, I, I'm like, I feel I was a little bit too slur in my words a little bit and uh, that's not really the image that I want to put out so if you are the first person to buy an NFT um, you get exclusive access to the com or to that content um, so when you go to OpenSea and you know you log on with your crypto wallet which is probably going to be MetaMask or Coinbase wallet um, and then you then buy that NFT. Um, whenever you go to that page, um, it shows you as the owner because you're signed in with your crypto wallet and you own. That's what, a, that's what an NFT is, a non-fungible token. It says you have digital proof of ownership. And because of that, that's like kind of now your little place in cyberspace. And it allows me to attach... Um, any sort of content that I want that only the person who's in that space that has that NFT has access to. So I'll put a Google Drive link to the uh, the forbidden SDHO. And I actually do have another SDHO I never released. Um, and so I'm gonna start doing exclusive content in exclusive -y ways. Um, so there's two different NFTs. There is the, uh, there is the cheaper one. Um, and anyone who buys one of those, um, cause they're multiple will end up getting access or if you purchase one of the one of ones, so like only you will ever own that particular SDHO thumbnail, um, then it can be exclusive. So thank you all very much. Okay. The wave table. Now we're going to be doing something, uh, chord theory, but it's going to be fun. It's not going to be so scary. And to be honest with you, this new Ableton live 11 feature. So it was new to Ableton live 11. I can't remember when live 11 came out. I think it might've been, um, early 2018, maybe. I don't, I don't know. It wasn't recently, so when I say new feature, I don't mean like it just came out, but it was new with Ableton Live 11. So if we double click into Wavetable here, and you don't have to use Wavetable, you can use anything you want. I'm just gonna use Wavetable because I just want to use that synthesizer. I'm um, kind of having a love affair with it. I don't know if I just got to like a new level in my sound design, new level in my Wavetable where I was like, oh yeah, this, 
it's going to give amazing sounds, but you can use anything. Uh, right now we're in this MIDI editor. Now anytime you have MIDI, anytime you're playing MIDI, whether you got a, a keyboard that plays MIDI, you know, um, whether you're just working in a DAW, you know, and you're just drawing in MIDI notes or, you know, whatever it is, you're always going to have this which, uh, a piano roll, you know, so you got the piano here, um, and I mean, you can even uh, put on this little headphone icon and it's a piano roll. Why would you not have a piano there? And so it lets you know where you're drawing these in. And this is a one bar loop. You can see one, you got the one, you got the two, the three, and the four. Those are the beats of the bar. And you want to make some chords. Uh, you want to make some chords and you want to demystify them. So we are going to do that thing I told you that was new to Ableton Live 11, and that is to, and where is it? Oh geez, I'm getting scared and nervous here. Um, if you click this little scale down here, notice how now it's giving us a cheat sheet. This is C major. I notice how right here at C, it's like full red here, kind of just letting you know, like visually, like, yeah, that's the tonic. But I'm actually gonna, believe it or not, we're gonna keep all of these same notes, but we're gonna shift to minor just because I like minor. And so when we search for minor, um, the true minor scale is natural minor, but for all intents and purposes, it's what everyone knows is minor. So if you just click minor here, you'll be good. But for if any reason you were wondering, because there's are, there are two minor scales. I mean, a minor scale just means you have a minor third in there instead of a major third, which would have been major, but like melodic minor. Melodic minor has the, um, it has the major seven instead of the flat seven. Um, and yeah, you can play with that. That's cool. Um, but I just want traditional minor specifically. And then I don't want to be in the key of C. I want to be in the key of A. Um, even though A minor and C major are the exact same notes, um, every major has its relative minor. And so, um, by the way, if you push B, you get this pen. If you turn it off, you don't. Um, I actually kind of want to uh, shift up arrow. I'm going to turn this off because I don't want to hear that. So let's, uh, let's make the chords of the A minor scale shall we? And the reason why I wanted A minor is because it's all white notes, even though it doesn't matter because all of these are lit up for us. I just figured it would be easy and you don't have to keep to a scale. So like you can break it, you know, a lot of times, you know, you can, if it's like a minor sixth, you can like move it up to a major six and some of the chords in the scale might sound better. It's in, in that sort of a way because typically sixth chords, if you wanted to have play a sixth chord, um, which are also like common with 13th chords because it's the same note, just an octave up. Um, did you know we were getting into the chord theory today? By the way, it's going to get a lot more musical, but for but I, you have to realize I have to structure these videos where I the beginner can learn, the intermediate can learn, and the advanced can learn. And that's what's great is you can always come back to these. So we're, we're starting with the A minor scale, and I want to make a really good A chord because the music I make um, oftentimes it might just be one chord. And what really is a chord? Um, well, to be honest with you, I love chords because they're like emotions, you know, like, but they can be very complex emotions when you start getting to more complex chords. So how do you build, um, how do you build chords? Well, we're in A minor. What's the A chord? So the A, so this will be the one chord. So of course it's going to be A. And I'm going to just hit legato and just extend this all the way out. So the A minor chord or any chord exists by stacking thirds. So the simplest way to put it is if you hold option and drag, you can drag it up. So I want to start making what the uh, one chord is going to be. So I'm going to play A, of course, because it's an A chord. And then we're not going to go to B. We're going to go to C. So we skipped a note. So the, the next one, because a chord at its most basic is a triad, meaning three notes. Not D, but E. You skip each time of the scale. And with this scale mode we've got, we don't have to just, we don't have to just rely to, okay, 
one, two, three, one, two, three, four, okay. Thirds are either a minor third interval of three notes, so A, you go up one, two, three, that's a minor third. A major third interval would be four notes up, one, two, three, four. How do you even know? Well, you would have to know the notes in the scale, uh, or you can just use this, and I would do that, uh, unless you just know it all by heart. So you play this and you get a beautiful sound. This is an A minor chord, A minor triad. <laughs> Let's uh, command A, shift. That was kind of loud. At least for me, I'll be changing it for you guys. So, even though that sounds really nice, someone is probably saying, why stop there? Let's go up again. Oh, well, not that. Sorry, I had them all selected. Take this E, skip. Now we have a minor seven chord. I'm adjust the amp. Just the volume, this is amp, just the volume. Maybe give it a little bit of harmonics here in the wave pool. Let's give some modulation to the oscillator one position. rate mode. Actually, no, sorry. Beats. Interjecting a little sound design in there. So let's uh, keep going because someone's like, uh, what happens if you keep going? Do we break the rules of thermodynamics? What happens? I don't know. Well, we did a minor seven chord. Do we want to put it on the A and active up? No, we want to skip. Now we have a minor nine chord. Now you've probably heard this sound before. I'm going to take all these and move them in. I don't like them going all the way. We need more release, so let's go to the amp envelope. More attack as it's too uh, tough at the beginning. And then let's uh, mute it by pushing zero. So now you're getting the minor seven. Now the minor nine. that gave me an idea let's do that so it's crazy because um i don't know about you guys uh now look we got a bar i'm going to duplicate and i'm going to so now that's what we were doing but now we've got a two bar loop so now let's click play really quick No, I don't want that. What I do want, okay, two bars, is I want a four bar loop. Why? Because um, I wanted this. So now you got, because I want it to repeat. Maybe I need it faster. So what is that? If you were in, I don't want to say an untrained person, it sounds too like, negative um but uh to the untrained ear and i'll just use me as an example is because i would listen to like these like like chilled like hip-hop chill kind of stuff 
And I would hear something like that, and I loved it because the chords sounded so emotive. You know what I mean? Like each time you like keep making these chords more complex, and you can go so complex to where it just doesn't sound good, and then that's when you want to start voicing the chord differently. Because if you're holding down like 10 notes, like, I mean, you know, uh, but in any event, uh, I was noticing like that that phrase that we just listened to, it sounds like you're going from like one chord to another chord, but really you're just going from an A minor nine to an A minor seven. And I like that, like I don't need, so that's what was so tough for me as well as I was like, you know, it seems like when you go from like an A chord to a D chord, you're going from like different types of like chords like that that are like on a different uh, uh, starting note. I don't know, it just, it sounds too traditional. I almost like the way that sounds, so. Um, I mean, you can keep, I'm going to call this first phrase. And if you click on it and click uh, command R on a Mac, you can rename it, but I'm going to also highlight it and do command D, which I believe it's control D control R on a PC. I'm just going to delete that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to our original thing. As always, if you right click, crop clip, um, let's keep going. So what would be next? D, so that's one, two, three, four, five. So now it's like a suspended chord, I guess you could say, but listen to how this one sounds. I mean, pretty wonderful. And listen how it sounds compared to this one. So you can keep going, you can like minus some notes, but then you might want to start on a whole nother chord altogether. So why don't we just delete all of these and let's pick the black sheep chord. Um, so the A chord's the one chord, the B chord's the two chord, the C chord is the three. You keep going up, you get it. What, what you find is um, just like certain degrees in a scale, some are more harmonic than others as it relates to the first degree, the tonic. So the same thing is true with these chords. And while we're making these chords right now, they're all within the scale. So that's what's called diatonic chords. So if you want to like look this up or learn more, you would type in diatonic chords. But suffice it to say, you know, we could build the two chord, which would be B, or the three chord, which would start on, which would start on C, and we're gonna build on the three chord. Why? Because the, the one chord, the four chord, the five chord, those are the ones that are used the most. Boring, you know, then I think the seventh chord, the second chord, and then I think the sixth, and then finally the third in terms of like, I guess how harmonically relevant it is, which I don't even really get like, so that's why I wanna play around with the third chord. It's gonna sound different. We're gonna go from like the one chord to the three chord. This will be like a second, um, It'll actually, you know what, I'm going to delete this. I'm going to duplicate it again because what I want to do is I want to start creating this chord, but I want to be able to like compare, contrast it with our, so like this chord is pretty much like this A minor nine is like building the framework. So we're going to have like two phrases. So I'm going to cancel these out and um, we're not going to construct the B chord, we're going to construct the C chord, which I don't know why the third would be like the least harmonic, because like the third in this scale is the minor third, which is what distinguishes it from being minor. So yeah, it sounds probably going to sound good. So, so what do we do? So we've got the C, we want to, and again, I'm option dragging. No, we skip one there, then we skip one there. Then we skip one there. I don't know. Could this be right? This, looks, this doesn't look right. I don't know why. Oh, no. There. So we've got C. We skip D. We go to E. Because each time you skip. So if we were going up like this one, this would be, this would be um, a second. Inter the intervals would be going up a second. Uh, you know, 
Going up an interval will be going up each of these. If you go up by two, that's a major second. Go up by two, major second. Go up by one, C, minor second. But we're not going up, we're going up by threes, or, or we're going up by thirds, which is you either go up by four, so this is a major chord, one, two, three, four, that's a major third. And then what would the next one be? Actually down here, I don't know why I got so confused earlier. Probably because these are so close. Um, so what is this? Uh, this is a C, one, two, three, four. Okay, that's a major third interval, which means this is going to be a major chord, which means it's going to be one, two, three, a minor third interval. So this is a, and then if you skip again, um, we will get this interesting chord, which is a major seven chord, which sounds really good. So let's just hear what this sounds like. So let's uh, take it in a little bit so it doesn't end, duplicate it. And now let's bring it back and see what it sounds like when we go over to here. Play the first one. Another thing is, you know, just highlight these, and now you're just you're going to be going from this uh, the minor nine to just the triad. So that's what I wanted to uh, get into. This just gets you kind of thinking about how things work. You know, with this first phrase, you get this wonderful pattern and you're really not moving off of an A chord. Uh, you're, you're just playing with these higher notes, which are, um, I can't think of the right word to describe what, what, what that is from like a music theory standpoint. Because you're not just, you're. You're not just using like the higher order harmonics, you know, because that's more for like the makeup of the sound. You're 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 playing like the higher voicings, yeah, like the higher voicings of the of the chord, and it's really neat um, because these like m these nine chords, seven chords, they have more like you know, it's like a triad, you know, so like just three right here. That's like a cheese pizza, and then you add a seventh, and now the pizza's got more flavor, so maybe it's like, I don't know, a sausage pizza. <laughs> and then you say, well, I don't just want the sausage, I want the pepperoni as well. So now you've got that, and you can keep going, but remember, as I told you, it can get unwieldy. You know, just because you've got a pot of soup and just because you've got a pizza with a lot of toppings at your disposal doesn't mean you want to put a million toppings on. But you do want to experiment. Why? Because you learn. What does a kid do? You know, a kid literally will put, like, gummy bears on the pizza because, like, they think it's funny and they're like, what does gummy bear pizza taste like? That's crazy. That's cracktastic. You know what I'm saying? And then, obviously, the kid probably eats it and is like, oh, yeah, I guess gummy bears don't taste good with, like, pizza. You know, you know, turns out Twizzlers don't taste good on pizza. You know what I mean? And then, but, but like, it was fun. You experimented, you know? Like that person who was always like, I know it sounds crazy, but putting peanut butter on a pizza is the greatest thing in the world. And then everyone's like, oh, wow, really? You're so interesting. And then everyone's like, no, nah, this person just wants attention. Don't we all just want, <laughs> don't we all just want a little attention? All right, so anyways, uh, What next? I'm getting tired, <laughs> which is weird because I should have all this energy right now. No, I'm not. I'm just, uh, I'm not sure where to go yet, and I feel like I can't slow down and think, even though I can just edit this out and take a break and walk back. So, chord theory, you're going to want to play with chord. You find it down here. You've got all of these chords. Remember, I would talk about the Hungarian minor. That's an interesting one. 
then you've got other interesting chords. You know, you've got your major chords, no pun intended, not just major, meaning like the ones you see all the time, minor, Dorian, Mixolydian, Lydian, Phrygian, Locrian, although you would hardly ever use Locrian, but that would probably be a reason to use it because it's like a minor third, a minor fifth, a minor six, a minor, it's like, it's all like just, yeah. And then you've got chords that aren't seven, made up of seven notes, you know, pentatonic, what does penta mean? Five, you know? some eight-tone Spanish. Chances are it's got eight notes in it. Like, you can go any way you want, you know? Um, Because a scale is made up of... A scale is made up of uh, a combination of major and minor seconds. And chords, as we just saw, are made up of major or minor thirds and then because this is obviously the the music theory the chord theory course class hangout podcast um you might say well what if i constructed a scale using fourths or fifths and it's like yeah you can do that um and so just have fun i mean what does incense what does Hirajoshi sound like? You know? Kumoi. To be honest, I wouldn't even worry about these ones you've never heard of. Like, it's just going to be, as we said, a combination of major and minor seconds. Um, so, yeah, have fun. So, I think what we're going to do is we've got our nice little chord phrases. I don't really feel like digging into wavetable sound design yet because that's the thing. Like, and this is something I'm trying to actively learn is, you know, I've I've done we, we've done about thirty minutes of chord theory, a little bit of some synthesizer theory and programming, and I'm like kind of tired right now. But I can't <laughs> mentally. That's a lot, you know. I used a lot of brain juice. Okay. Um, normally I would save this project and like open it up in like two years. <laughs> That's not supposed to be happening. So. Um, Let's get a MIDI track because we owe it to ourselves. And I want to throw down some drums. So I'm going to drag a drum rack and drum synth down here. What's really good about this, and you should see drum synth here if you're on Live 11. Otherwise, it'll be in your Macs for Live devices. And I think once you open it up, I think it might add them to instruments. I'm really not sure. I have my Ableton on. It's it's the only program or anything that I have where I allow automatic updates because I trust Ableton in that regard. It it does automatic updates, but it won't automatically update you to like Ableton Live 12 or something like that'll be like a different install. So like I'm pretty confident that all of their new updates, which is good because it'll take out some bugs and then it might even give you some new devices if it's like a very big update whereas other programs I feel like they'll upgrade and then it won't be so stable but in any event um so the drum synth what's good is that unless you have a go-to drum kit you can just drop these and they're like really good so I I know I want to kick I know I want a snare the next thing would be adding a clap or a snare so grab whatever you like I think the snare is real snappy and good yeah great So right out of the gate, you've got access to those, but you can tweak them. So I'm going to be doing a lot more drum programming after I do like my sound design stuff or my like chords or melody, whatever. Just start playing around with these and they sound good right out of the box. And you can, you've got all these little, um, you got all these like little, uh, you can customize it and they sound really good. They sounded horrible or like really flat or very like, oh, electronic computer drums. You know, I'd be like, there's no point, you know? Um, so I would say start doing this a lot um, unless you already have drum racks that you use that you've made. Cause like you can drag any samples into these drum racks, but it's like, unless you have a pre-made drum rack that probably took you hours to make like you could search through like thousands of kicks and snares that's terrible so alternatively you can just drag and drop an 808 or a 707 like you know a classic kit it'll sound kind of lame out the box but you can throw then a uh, uh you know like a um what is that thing called uh 
Where is it? Oh, no, it's not my effects. Drum, drum boss. Yeah, I couldn't think of the name, drum boss, or throw a distortion on there, throw some compressors. But these are sounding great right out the box. So let's just start playing our first phrase and let's see what sort of a drum thing we can play. We've just got to double click in here. Snares are always going to be on the two and the four. I would keep it on sixteenths here. Let's relaunch. Snares hurt my ears too much. High pass, so how do we high pass it? It's killing my ears, how do we change that? Give me an idea. Duplicate this. Eighth notes. Eighths, hats, duplicate. Now it's just going to do uh, 16ths. See, so ready? Now we're going to move to this. I'm going to click this one. Now we're going to get 16ths. Oh no, because I pushed the space bar, I stopped recording. How ridiculously lame. Oh, those look nice, don't they? Now, what's stopping us from going to our number two? Sounds a lot different. Here you could record that in. Put 
put these guys back and maybe do something like this. See if that sounds good. Try that one next, that one next. Oh, we just got an idea. Well, you know what's coming next now. I don't know. Might that sound good? It's in scale. Kind of has to. So, like, that wasn't like me being that creative. It's like, oh, let's just try the next note in the scale. But now we got this visual feedback. Thank you, Ableton 1111. What is this? G. 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 Expecting that. I was just trying to do like a this. G. 
Shi Ai Gadai. You guys want G A Gadai? I'm hearing something. something, I don't know what it is. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I don't know which word that is. I did too many things at once, I guess. Let's check this out. Let's do something crazy. Now it's not perfect. Gonna change every time now. Doesn't always sound good every time. Two bar, jeez. I hate having to adjust the view. Two bar, two bar. Oh, that's where I did the changes. So it doesn't always work, but especially when, yeah. So that was it. Um, yeah, you could get like a bass sound, which you would have to, you know, take into account what chords you were using this is a really nice trick at the end, um, just to space, spice things up. So what you could do is, um, you could do like first phase plus. So when you go into the first phrase, you'll just delete these or just do that and then go into here, do that. Bring it back, bring it. No, actually, I don't think we want that back. Because we want it to just be these four. So then when you're playing, if you go back to first phrase plus, you now got this. And so you, in session view, um, you get to play these clips. And when you launch them, they're going to launch on the bar. And if you hit this button to record, you will then be able to record it in here, and then you can export it out. Uh, this is arrangement view, also commonly called the timeline. Before Ableton came on the scene and, and we're all about their session view, which you push tab to go back, this was all it was. So if you were like um, some hip hop uh, producer or an electronic music producer or whatever, 
you just had this in like Pro Tools and other places and then Ableton, and then it was like, well, how do you perform it live? And Ableton was like, well, we're gonna have this session view and we're gonna have those grid controllers, which when I saw a launch pad, a Novation launch pad for the first time, and I mean like back in like 2012, like 11 years ago, and I just saw these like lights, <laughs> these like indiscriminate lights or just, just like all these pads, you're like, what does any of it do? And then I was just like, wow, like I was meant to use this thing. It looked like a spaceship controller. And in fact, I actually saw there are some like sci-fi movies where like in their sci-fi things, they'll have like little launch pads because it just kind of looks like that. So that was fun. Um, drum rack, yeah. Uh, get into these because they're really good you can always swap them out later but i'm surprised how good they sound right out of the box like i don't even need to like oh kick i want the pitch to be at 50 hertz or you know and then these different things you can it's just it's just great and then like having a synthesizer or or a preset that you know you like um or being able to uh just do it on the fly so that was awesome smash a like if you'd like to support me buy an nft um, decentralized money, crypto wallets, holding possession of your funds. It's a thing to at least just know about. There's some very affordable NFTs on there too that I think are like only like 20 bucks. And I think I'm going to try to create like a free NFT thing because in the future, you know, having like an NFT in your wallet can like gain you special access to like a hangout or a thing where, you know, who knows, maybe these might be virtual at some point. That'd be really crazy if we all had like VR headsets on and like we're all, in, you know what I mean? Like all in like a room together. I don't know, it'll be really cool. So, um, hope all is doing well. I thought that was very, very fun, very interesting. Needed to get into some chord theory because it's very important and also letting you know that three, 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 three. Did you see that? Did you see that? Um, all right. Thank y'all. <laughs>